So there's been uh, two classification systems released in 2022. Uh, one was an update of the WHO system, and one was a new classification system called the ICC, or International Consensus Consortium. The latter one uh, had a few more clinicians associated with it, and maybe that's why one of the key differences between the two was that in the ICC they uh, called out a, a group called MDS slash AML, which are those with 10 to 19% blasts, which in the WHO still remain in the MDS category, either IB1 or IB2, depending on the number of blasts. Also, the two classifications differed suddenly in uh, calling out uh, patients with recurrent genetic or cytogenetic abnormalities because they don't require 20% uh, blasts or even 10% blasts to be called AML, as long as they have, a patient has one of those recurrent abnormalities, such as a 6.9 or an 8.16, or even a T821, they can be considered AML in the WHO if they have 5% blasts or greater, in the ICC if they have 10% blasts or greater. So the presence of two classification systems has uh, caused, caused some consternation in some circles, but I, I think it's really up to the clinician to synthesize all the data, no matter what you call it. Which brings up the next thing and the last thing I'll talk about, which is the ELN 2022 classification system, which um, really is more of a prognostic issue than a pure classification issue from the pathology standpoint. The classification, uh, the uh, prognostic categories do impact the way we treat patients to a certain degree. And some of the key changes in the 2022 ELN classification system have to do with FLT3 mutations because of the advent of the FLT3 inhibitors, which we talked about previously. Those who have uh, a FLT3 mutation, uh, regardless of the allelic ratio, regardless of whether or not this is an associated NPM1 mutation, are all considered in the intermediate group, whereas they used to be in the unfavorable group if there was no NPM1 mutation associated with that. So those people with NPM1 mutations with no FLT3 mutations are still considered favorable. So there's been some other subtle changes which aren't worth going into, but it's good for people to understand that there are two classification systems that are modern and one prognostic system that's modern too as well.